Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nick and today we have reached the ninth movie in the Friday the 13th franchise with Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. This should be a real interesting uh, discussion here, but before we get into that, don't forget I am not alone in this review series. We got Filthy Dan's film discussions, we got the boys over at Good Real Hunting, we got Moser Movie Reviews, and we got Review and Rankings with Robbie Sobel. All putting out reviews the same day as mine, so go check them out. Links will be in the description, guys. As well as House of the Living Dead's channel. They put out watch-alongs or watch parties to the films that we reviewed the same night. So Friday night, be sure to check out Jason Goes to Hell. Link will be in the description as well. And last but not least, don't forget to head on over to the J-Man's Movie Cave where he's going to be putting on an award show for Friday the 13th out on August 13th. So go over there and subscribe now so you don't miss it. Again, all those links will be down in the description, guys. Go check them out and let's dive into this film. So Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, was released in 1993. It stars John D. LeMay, Carrie Keegan, Stephen Williams, and Kane Hodder as returning as Jason. And this one was directed by Adam Marcus. So Jason Goes to Hell has to be one of the most oddest and bizarre entries in this entire franchise. It... It's really out there, <laughs> let's just say that. Uh, this was actually the first Friday film I've ever watched. I caught this one on TV in the 90s when I was probably like 7 or 8 at the time. And I recorded it on a blank VHS. Had no clue what was going on. Uh, a lot of things like the body swap swapping and that didn't really bother me at all because I had no idea what the other Friday 13 movies were like at the time. So... But looking back on it, it is a very bizarre entry. And this is also the first New Line Cinema Friday the 13th. Uh, they acquired the rights by this point, and they were still trying to pump out a Freddy vs. Jason film. So let's get into the plot a little bit, guys. Uh, the way this starts off, you figure it's going to turn out to be like any other Friday film. We get this girl heading to a cabin in Crystal Lake, and right away she's taking her clothes off, getting ready to take a shower, and we're like, okay... So far, so good. And then uh, Jason shows up, and we come to find out that this was just a big trap set by the FBI. And uh, this girl is working for them as well. And she's just trying to lure Jason out of the house so they can ambush him and s explode the hell out of him. They, they blow him up. And this all happens the first 10 minutes or so of the movie, mind you. And Jason's defeated, or so we think. His body parts scatter everywhere. And they ship all of his parts to the morgue. Uh, while they're at the morgue, one of the morticians ends up eating Jason's heart. I'm guessing it's like a calling to him or it's like has him in like a hypnotic state to eat it. Because if he just eat that, he ate that damn heart on his own, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> but no, the I'm, I'm thinking the heart was like uh, drawing him in or whatever. He eats it and he essentially becomes Jason Voorhees but still in his body. That's what pretty much this film is. Uh, Jason kills so many people and ends up transferring bodies every so often to, to not get caught or whatever. And he's essentially tracking down his family members, uh, meaning his sister and eventually his niece. Because that is the only way that he can be reborn again into his own body is to uh, transfer himself into a family member. And the family members are also the only people who are able to defeat Jason. Now that is such an out there premise for a Friday the 13th film and I don't know what the hell they were smoking when they wrote this one. <laughs> it's actually very reminiscent of the film The Hidden which came out earlier even though the director Adam Marcus claims he have never seen that movie or heard of it before this film but there's a lot of similarities with the body swapping and such. Even films like The Thing did it as well but those movies did it a lot better and yeah, this one was a complete mess in my opinion. Just the continuity alone, I mean, say what you want about the other films, but at least they tried to connect the sequels together. Like uh, Part 8, he was still attached to the bottom of the lake uh, from Part 7, you know, he was still down there. And this one, we pretty much don't get no explanation, nothing. It almost feels like a standalone film. But the problem with that is... The director even stated that this is not a standalone, this is a sequel. And it is canon in the series. Everything that happens here, actually, it's a part of the series, essentially. He said this is not a one-off or a spin-off. 
this is a an actual sequel. And that's where I have a problem. Because... <sighs> How do I even explain this? It's just such a damn mess, dude. There is a comic book adaptation, though, that does fill in the gaps between Manhattan and this film. Where it... Sh I guess it explains that Jason headed on back to Camp Crystal Lake, killing everybody in his path on his way there. And it, it explains how the FBI got involved and started tracking him and tried to defeat him. And we really need that in this film for me because I love continuity when it works, but this, this seems like they didn't even try. Maybe a bit with Jason's look, how he has like that meatball look. He, he's all like boiled up and shit. I'm guessing maybe that was from the acid from part eight or in the sewers or whatever. From the sewage i don't know but it's just never really explained and the title of this movie is jason goes to hell the final friday you never hear anybody complain about that but they'll complain for an hour about jason takes manhattan saying that he only takes manhattan the last 20 minutes okay jason only goes to hell the last five minutes of this film so i don't hear you complaining about that and it's called the final friday it ain't. I know Final Chapter pulled that shit and <laughs> look where we are now. Nine films deep and there's more to come. Although Final Chapter was actually supposed to be the end, but I have no idea why they called it the Final Friday in this one. So I'm going to do this review a little bit differently like I did on my old reviews where I state like what I liked and what I didn't. Just because uh, it's just going to work easier for me with this film. So my first positive I got is the kills. I mean, this is the one reason that I keep coming back to this film every couple of years, is the kills. They're gory, they're violent, and they're bloody. The special effects look great. And it's real nice to see after the MPA cut down all the late 80s films in this franchise. We even get some body horror in there with the guy like melting on the floor and his jaw falling off and that. And it all looks great. The effects are so well done. Uh, one of the best kills in the franchise is the tent kill where uh, the girl gets the pole through her and ripped right up. I know Robbie really loves this kill. And if you see my top 10 kills in the franchise, this made it to number 3. So I really love this kill too. And this movie really has that going for it. A few other ones are like when the guy gets his like wrist snapped, you see the bones coming out. Uh, like I said, the guy melting to the floor. Uh, the other guy getting his face push so hard into the metal grate that like his skin's going through the little holes all looks great especially if you watch the uncut version which i did for this review definitely the way to go another positive i can come up with this film is the ending how uh, jason does get hauled down the hell with like the animatronics and the puppets i thought that was really cool and uh, a nice little touch it, it looks way better than using like digital effects or anything especially in 93 so uh, that was the way to go for that and I also liked when Freddy's glove came up and grabbed down Jason's mask to give us a little teaser for Freddy vs. Jason. At the time when I watched this, when I was like 7 or 8, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> it was actually a really good jump scare at the time. It doesn't work for me as an adult so much, like the jump scare part. But yeah, I was not expecting that at all watching this as a kid. And this, poof, the glove comes up, you hear Freddy laugh. And yeah, it's great. It's, it's just too bad we had to wait so long for, like, pretty much another 10 years for Freddy vs. Jason to actually come out. But yeah, I love that ending. A few other positives I would have to say would be, like, the little bit of meta humor used in here. Whether it be, like, Kane Hodder playing the security guard, giving uh, Jason shit when uh, he's the one actually playing Jason and then ends up dying from it. Or, like, when Steven picks up the hitchhikers and drives them to Crystal Lake Camp. To drink, have sex, and die. <laughs> he even says that to them before he drops them off. Which uh, was pretty funny because everybody who went to camp like that died. And this, all the other shout outs to all the other like horror movies in this film. Like we got the Evil Dead with the book and the the dagger. We also got uh, a crate of uh, from the thing. Like the Arctic Expedition down in the basement at the Vori's house. I, I like when they tie in other films like that. It just uh, it just makes it a little more fun. Especially for the horror fans. Alright, I tried my hardest. That was all the positives I could come up with. Now let's get into the mixed aspects. So my number one mixed aspect in this film would be the mythology and the lore. Okay, I do like that they try to do something different. This is the ninth installment. So you don't want to see the same thing over again. Where they go to camp just to get killed. I am glad that they switched it up. But, it was done in a very messy and half-assed way, in my opinion. 
the, there's just not enough explanation for certain things, uh, different things. They just make up new rules as they go, it seems. Like, like when did Jason have a sister? It's never mentioned before. It's not really something you could just throw out there, you know? And she's not deformed or anything. She looks great. She's real, uh, a real hottie, and she's a grandmother in this, so right on. She looks great, though. I think it's played by, uh, what was her name? Erin Gray, and she's like a big actor from back in the day, so she's kind of the alumni in this film. And, but she does a great job acting and all that. It's just, I find it stupid to have her sister in here and then the, his sister and then to have his niece after that. I mean, the first film had claims that it was ripping off Halloween when it came out. And then the franchise changed so much that no one was really ta comparing it to Halloween anymore. But in this one, you have him going after his sister and then going after his niece, which is like, okay, where the comparisons are starting to come back. Even though they pretty much draw the line there because this film is nothing like any other slasher I've ever seen. Like the Necronomicon would have been a really great idea to, to talk more about that and explain that Pamela Voorhees used that to bring Jason back after he drowned. And we could have tied in everything and make it make so much more sense. But I do understand that they didn't have the rights to Evil Dead so they couldn't really talk too much about the ne Necronomicon or that source material. And, uh, yeah, I get that, but still it just leaves a bad taste in your mouth when you only get a little bit. It's like a tease. Even like the shaving scenes, like it's as weird as it is in that, like, like what the hell? Jason's shaving up people in that before he sticks his tongue in their mouth, like pretty much kissing them with that worm thing to transfer his body into them. It's weird that it doesn't happen all the time like that. It's only a few scenes, and the other ones he can just transfer regularly. He doesn't need to shave them, so. So, I don't mind the body jumping aspects, but I'm still pretty mixed on it, because this is a Friday film, and that's nothing, that has nothing to do with a Friday film. I don't hate it, though. I'm more mixed on it, just because this is not what I came here to see, but it, it does make for an entertaining watch, I guess, in that aspect. Like... It doesn't do as good of a job as The Hidden or The Thing or other body swapping movies like The Faculty or anything like that. But it's, I guess it's better than seeing the same shit over and over again. All right, guys, let's get into the negatives, the bad. And my first negative is a weird one, but it's Jason himself. Everybody gives this film shit because there's not enough Jason in the movie. But I'm actually happy there's not a lot of Jason because I freaking hate Jason in this film. Everything from his movements to... It feels like... He feels like a wrestler. Like a WWE star at this point. The way he moves. And he's like picking up Steven at the end like a hundred times. And just throwing him around. Instead of just killing him like he, he would normally do. Yeah, I hate that. I hate his movements. I don't... I do not like his look. I know a lot of people like his look in this. Don't like the blue shirt and the belt and the blue pants. A little ripped up. Don't like the clothes at all. Looks stupid to me. Uh, his meatball look there all bubbly ass face is okay i guess even though it's never really explained why uh, i'm guessing it's from the events of takes manhattan but yeah it's it's not my favorite look that's for sure even the mask doesn't do it for me guys i hate them damn grunts and shit he makes especially when they're shooting them before they explode him the fbi there he's like <laughs> like he makes these weird noises and it happens a few times throughout this film like at the start and at the end and oh, it's just a pet peeve of mine. I hate it. So I'm actually glad that Jason takes a backseat in this film. I prefer watching the other characters go on a on a rampage than him. Definitely my least favorite portrayal of Jason by Kane Hodder. Uh, also, the directing in this movie isn't very good. Uh, I understand Adam Marcus was like 21 at the time, just came out of university and was hired on the spot like that, which was probably not the best choice. He. You can tell he's an amateur director there. It's his first film, and I hate a lot of it. <laughs> For instance, the editing is terrible. Like, there's there's a scene where they literally kill the mortician, and then they show a picture of him on the news, like, just minutes before he died. It's like, who took that picture? It's like, just dumb, and it's very amateur-like. The, the score for this movie was made by Harry Manfredini, but I don't find it works very well at all with the film. There's scenes I feel that could be more tense, 
and have a stronger mood to it or atmosphere but the music just i don't know for some reason in this movie it feels cheap uh when you pair it with the film it just doesn't work for me all this together just makes it feel like a, a tv movie like a movie that was made straight for tv and i can't believe that this made it through the writing boards and everything it, it's mind-boggling to me and like i mentioned earlier i hate the lack of continuity in this like they don't even try to connect the other films very well there's mentions of different things like the town knows of Jason. We got Crystal Lake and the main things, but they're especially part eight. They don't try to connect it at all. At least have the FBI have a scene where they mention him coming back from New York or something, you know, like I just I I hate when they don't even try to connect the earlier films. And why does everybody freaking love Creighton Duke? I find he's one of my least favorite characters in the whole franchise. I hate him. He comes out of nowhere, acts like the craziest badass of all, this bounty hunter that's after Jason, and uh, he acts like he's been in 10 movies already, but we don't even know who the hell he is. First time we're ever introduced to him. His dialogue is crazy weird, and <laughs> it's like so out of place. Especially, I, I do enjoy the hot dog, the girl sticking a hot dog through a donut in a pink dress or whatever. That part's kind of funny, but it's also very weird. Like, why? But yeah, just all of his scenes are stupid to me. He gets, a, like, when he snapped the guy's fingers in jail, it's like, what the hell are you doing, man? This is, it's like trying to just have a shock factor or something, but it just does not work for me. And in the end, he really does nothing. He, like, he gives information, that's it. He doesn't help defeat Jason really at all. And for him going on the whole movie, how he's a crazy bounty hunter, you think he would have put up more of a fight. And the rest of the cast in this film are pretty serviceable. Uh, they all do a fairly good job, I think, but there, there's no real standouts here. Yeah, I don't know how many times I have to say, but this movie is a mess. It's a complete abomination. There's even a scene where you're at the Voorhees house and there's a sign that says Voorhees and it's misspelled. How do you screw that up? Like, I know the director claims that he wasn't filming on that location that day. It was uh, the assistant director or whatever, but it doesn't matter who it is. Take the blame. You guys screwed up. Like, that's a big mess up too. I mean, we had bad Fridays before, like part five, seven, even eight uh, is there those are considered the worst well maybe not seven but five and eight for sure but i i find those at least rewatchable and very entertaining i find myself going back to those films a lot this one never <laughs> i will say though that my favorite scene in this film aside from the kills net like an entire scene i do like the whole battle at the restaurant at the end when you got the jason playing as the news guy going in and just messing everybody up while uh, Jessica and Steven are trying to get out through the other end of the restaurant. I think that's a really cool scene. That's probably my favorite. I actually do like the lighting in that scene in that since the power goes out and you get the, like this darkish blue tint. We also got Jessica's friend in that scene who is a complete badass with the shotgun. She's the coolest character in this film to me. She's like shooting him and shit. Eventually going up to stab him with the pole but then dying herself because Jason hauls him. Her on him as well. But yeah, she is the hero in this film. So guys, you want me to give this movie a rating? I'm going to have to give it no higher than a 3.5 out of 10. I think it's a pretty terrible film. Has a lot of problems. Uh, it could have been tightened up a lot better. Uh, and it's an even worse Friday the 13th movie. If you want to try to compare it to the rest, just how different it is and how it doesn't make much sense. I pretty much only come back to this movie for the kills or when I'm marathoning them or when I have to do a review like this, unfortunately. But it's not one I go back to very often at all. And it's a shame that it was my first Friday ever. So there you have it, guys. That's my thoughts and review on Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know down below if you completely disagree with me or was I on point. Uh, let me know how you feel about this film down below in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you on that. And don't forget to follow me on Letterboxd where I try to keep my YouTube channel and my reviews on Letterboxd uh, synchronized. I try to keep them lined up. So link for that will also be in the description. So I'll see you guys next week when we cover Jason X. Until then, thanks for watching.